Good morning, everyone. I'm seeing people start to filter in through the waiting room. So thank you for your patience as we are working through a few things. Happy Friday. All right, we're up to a little over maybe 50 now. We might just kick it off in a minute to let people get settled in, let their audio come through. Great. Happy Friday. It's crazy to think we're just about two weeks away from the walk. I'm not sure how we got here, but here we are. Um, really excited to be with you all today to chat through some logistics, to answer any questions you might have, and make sure everyone's feeling really good for the walk, which is on October 6th. Um, just a few housekeeping notes. Please bear with us as we work through any technology issues. You all know how it is. Zoom can be finicky, so appreciate your patience there. Uh, the chat is open, so feel free to send anything through the chat. And we also have the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen. So if you do have questions you'd like us to address during the webinar, if we have time, please ask them that way. And if we have time, we'll get to them. And if not, we'll, we'll touch base after. Just a note that the town hall will be recorded today, and we're going to um, share it in an email later this afternoon. So we are excited to chat with you today, whether you're walking with us on the course on October 6th or you're walking virtually in your own community. Um, we're going to give you everything you need to know for walk day. So as we look ahead to walk day, I know we all have so many different reasons for why we walk. Many of us have loved ones on our mind, in our hearts when we're walking on October 6th. One thing that we hear from walkers year over year is how inspiring and how touched they are by our HERO program. If you're not familiar with the HERO program, here's a picture of it on the screen here, one of our HERO signs, but um, Jimmy Fun Walk Heroes are the walk's adult and pediatric patient partners. So they are the inspiration for why many of us are walking and their posters are on the course from Hopkinton to Boston. And they'll also be at the Boston Common Finish Line powered by Schneider Electric. One thing to note here for returning walkers, you may recall in past years, hero, hero signs have served, and you can see it here, as mile and half mile markers along the course. That is not going to be the case this year. We decided we didn't want to limit the number of heroes to 52 that we would have not only for this year, but for future years. So they'll no longer serve as mile and half mile markers, so we can expand the program if there's interest. You will see our mission moment signs will be our mile markers this year. So that's just one slight change that um, you will notice, but they will still provide the same inspiration and still be available along the course in at the finish line. And now we're so excited to, to quote unquote introduce you to our 2024 Jimmy from Walk Heroes with this brief video that Mia is going to play right now.
I know that video was so moving for me, as I'm sure it was for all of you as well. And it's so nice to place faces with names of all of our wonderful heroes. This link will be included in the follow-up email that we sent after the town hall today. And please, enc I encourage you to share it with your team, team members, with your donors. Um, and also, Heroes on Walk Day will be wearing teal Jimmy Fun Walk shirts. So be sure to look out for them. A lot of them, a lot of heroes go by their posters. They'll be at the finish line. So uh, make sure to say hello and to, to thank them for everything they're, they're doing. Okay, to switch gears a little bit, whether you're walking with us in Boston or you're walking in your own community, we're so excited for this year's walk. I know how busy this time of year is with fundraising, back to school, everything that comes with the fall, but we're so thankful for all that you're doing to support the walk. And before we dive in, we'd love if you could just drop your name, your team name, where you're walking, and anything else you want to share in the chat. We'd love to hear who's here today um, and anything else you'd like to share. So speaking of this year, how are we looking in terms of numbers? So as of today, we have over 6,500 people registered for the walk, and about 85% of those folks are walking with us on the marathon course. So around 15% or so are walking in their own communities. And we're tracking about 2% ahead in registered walkers, which is great. Um, when we're looking at fundraising, we are about flat compared to this time last year. Um, so keep up the good work with recruiting friends, families, and sending out your link on social and emails. And just one thing to note is that online registration will close at noon on Thursday, October 3rd. So as a reminder, you can still register in person on walk day, but we just shut down online registration on the 3rd at noon. And one thing just to note is that registration fees will go up to $40 from $30 um, after 10 3. So mailings, I feel like this is always, a, we have a lot of questions around this every year and it's so complicated, so we absolutely get it. There's a lot of moving pieces. So just a quick refresher on mailing dates so you can know when to expect your swag ahead of walk day. Um, I imagine that you might be wondering, you might be getting questions from your team members. So hopefully this slide will explain some of it and please follow up if you have more questions. So if you are a team captain and you opted in for the team captain mailing by 9-2, which was the deadline, you should have received your t-shirts this past week. This mailing was t-shirts for anyone who is registered on your team by 9-2. And please note that virtual walkers are excluded from this mailing as they receive their own separate mailing um, that's sent directly to them. And of course, team members who join your team after 9-2 can still grab their shirt um, during walk weekend. Our pay setter mailing. So if you were a 2023 pay setter or a 2024 walker who reached pay setter status by 9-9, um, you will receive your shirt and your pay setter bib by the end of September. Similar timing for walker bib mailing. If you are a walker who is registered by 9-9, you'll receive your bib by the end of September. So when you see mail coming from us at the end of September, make sure you're opening it. We hear from a lot of people that sometimes they recycle their, their bib. So make sure if you see something from Dana-Farber, the Jimmy Fund, I, we've, we've changed it so that it says bib and close to try to call it out, but make sure you're opening your mail and you're getting your bib. If you're a virtual walker, similar, we just use 9-9 as the deadline this year to make it as easy as possible for everyone. So if you registered by 9-9, you will receive your shirt by um, the end of September as well. And if you're a pay setter who's a virtual walker, you'll receive your shirt and your bib. One thing that we are doing again this year is our Top 250 Club. So... Um, this recognizes our top 250 fundraisers by not 929. So anyone who is a um, in our top 250 fundraisers by September 29th, you will be getting an email that week letting you know you're in the top 250 club. If you are walking in person, you can pick up your top 250 gear at the pace setter table at your start location. And if you're walking virtually, we'll be emailing you and attaching a version um, of um, the bib to to the email so you can so you can print it and hopefully wear it wherever you're walking. One thing to note, if you are a Dana Farber employee, we are and you don't have your shirt and you'd like to pick it up before walk day, Aaron Lewis on our team is hosting a t-shirt pickup day for employees. This will take place on Tuesday, October 1st from 11 to 2 at 10 Brookline Place on the first floor um, in conference room 1163. Of course, we have shuttles that run through Dana-Farber campuses, but please reach out to Erin if you have any questions. And if you know that you're coming and you might be picking up for a larger group, please just emailing her so um, we can make it as easy as possible to get you in and out. So I know this is a lot of information. So if you're worried you missed a deadline, you can't, you, you don't have your gear, do not worry. We can always get you your shirt, bib, any, a hat, anything else you need. Not only you can pick that up at early check-in, um, which is the Saturday before the walk, 10-5, or on walk day. And we'll talk about um, all of that in just a second. 
the next slide. As we're chatting about shirts, swag, everything that falls into that um, that realm, we wanted to just show you what, you what you'll be getting this year if you haven't received it yet. So on screen, you can see here the walk day shirt. We have our hats, and then this is the medal for this year as well. Uh, we've also listed out what the shirts will be for our volunteers. They'll be in mint green. Our site captains will be in orange. And as mentioned, our heroes will be in teal. Um, if you haven't done the walk before, we offer a few different kinds of hats, and they symbolize you know, different roles in the walk, if you will. So if you are a pay setter, so if you've raised 1500 or more, if you're over 18 or 500 or more, if you're under 18, um, there are royal blue hats available at the pay setter table. Make sure to grab one of those. Walkers will get a white hat, which you can see on screen right here. Team captains have a red hat and living proof hat for our patients is yellow. So make sure to grab all of your gear, whether it's at early check-in or on walk day. So in-person logistics. All the moving pieces with the swag mailing, it's a lot. We fully recognize that. So we wanted to discuss some logistics for those walking in person with us on 10-6. So early check-in will be held, as we do every year, we're going to be holding this at Wellesley High School on the 5th, so the Saturday before the walk, from 1.30 to 3.30. Registered walkers can come get anything else you need. If you haven't received anything, you can get your shirt, your bib, you can grab a hat, you can ask questions. If you have your bib, you need your shirt, anything like that, swing by, get what you need so you're ready to go on walk day. Um, one of the biggest updates for this year is our finish line. So the Jimmy from Walk finish line powered by Schneider Electric will be in Boston Common this year. Um, if you've been in Boston, you have probably seen that Copley is very much so still under construction. So we moved down the street a little bit. We're really, really excited to be finishing in the common. There's so much more room than we've ever had. Plenty of room to spread out grass. We're really, really excited. I think you all are really going to enjoy it. But one thing just to note is that because of this move, routes will be slightly longer. You can see the adjusted distances on screen here. And if you, if you signed up for the 10k and you're realizing that's a little bit too much we can change your route it's no problem please just reach out and we can do that for you um we've also been getting some questions on how how do we get into the finish line right like you're if you're used to finishing in the in copley what does it look like for finishing in the common so if you've done the walk when we finished in copley square it's very similar you're just going to keep walking down boylston street past copley square and you'll be funneled into the common via macarthur mall which is right off charles street and rest assured, we will have plenty of signage. We'll have energetic volunteers uh, who will make sure you know where you're going at all times. And just to help you visualize what the new finish line looks like, if you're visual people like I am, on the next slide here, we have um, kind of a map that shows you what is what. So you'll see here how you are entering the finish line. I'm, I'm using my mouse on the screen like you can see. And how you're funneled in through the finish line. And right here, you'll have metals. You'll have water, as you always did. And then you'll kind of filter into the green right there. So you can see our food court is accessible right off the walkway there. We'll have our info tent that you'll hit right when you finish in case you have questions. Team photos will be located, as you can see on the, street, on the, on the map here, right past the finish line shoot. So everything will be well labeled. Um, and then on the bottom half of, um, of the map here, you see we have a recovery zone, which is sponsored by Schneider, where we've had massages in the past. There's also more food located in there. We'll have our stage where we'll have our speaking program. There'll be restrooms along the backside here near MacArthur Mall and medical will also be back there as well. Um, one thing just to note on buses. So you can see on the map here that we have where afternoon buses are located. So um, in the afternoon, once you finish your walk, buses to BC, so the 10K start, will be on Boylston Street, and all other buses will be located um, on Beacon Street here. And again, plenty of signage, plenty of volunteers. One thing to note about morning buses is those will all be located on Charles Street. So depending on your logistics, how you're, if you're, how you're planning to get to the finish line, how you're planning to get back to where your car is, we've got it all outlined here. And in the, um, so let us know if you have questions. And actually on the next slide, um, on buses. This is always a very popular, you know, question and we totally get it. Logistics can be a lot to process, especially if it's an early morning. So as always, we are offering buses to the marathon, half marathon and 10K starts in the morning. We've never offered buses to the 5K start. So that is not changing. And post-walk buses will be going to all locations. So, um, Exact time and locations can be found in the event handbook, which one of my colleagues is going to pop into the chat shortly. That's a great resource to look at for any 
logistics questions that you have. Um, it really does outline everything, especially by start line. So please reference that. And I just really want to reiterate that all buses are running from the common. Nothing is running from Copley. Um, so we're, we're making sure that everybody knows that. In terms of parking, similar to uh, to last year, parking is very limited in the, around the common. So because of this, we encourage you to carpool, use public transportation, park at your start line. Um, that's just um, that's just what we're dealing with in the common. So also one thing that's new this year is located on the back of your bibs on the sticker where you have your emergency contact information will be a phone number for non-emergency medical needs. As always, for an emergency, please call 911 for non-emergency medical needs between refueling stations. So maybe if you twist your ankle and you need assistance, if you scraped your knee and you need first aid, please utilize this number. As always, medical professionals will be available at every refueling station. We will have medical suite buses along the route, but we recognize sometimes you need assistance between stations. So we hope this phone line can be of assistance if that scenario does arise. And we ask you that please, please, please do not use this number for walk day feedback snacks, porta potties, anything in that realm. That is what the, the post-walk survey is for. We need to keep this line open and available for non-emergency medical needs only, but we're really excited about this improvement. Um, refueling stations. We will have 11 refueling stations this year, um, one more than we had last year because the finish line is, is down the road a little bit. So we will have 11 refueling stations that will offer water, restrooms, and medical at each one. Six of the 11 refueling stations will have food. So similar to last year, we're following the same methodology. This also includes a lunch stop, which we are going to be having Wegmans sandwiches at this year. Wegmans is also our in-kind food sponsor. So they're providing food all along the route, which we're really excited for. You'll see on the screen here, we've shown the full route map and anywhere where you see an apple. So you can see there's either a water drop or an apple. Um, anywhere where it has an apple is indicating that's a refueling station with food. So we're not anticipating this to be an issue at all, but just a friendly reminder, if you are at a refueling station that has food, maybe grab an extra thing if you're feeling hungry because the next one may not. Also, if you are trying to meet up with members along the route, so if you're doing the marathon, you have team members who are doing the half marathon, where should you meet? We've got you covered. Um, you can see this on the screen right here. We'll also include this in the email that we send later this afternoon, but we have some suggestions on where you could meet up along the route to make it easy for you and your team members if you're doing different distances. As always, we encourage you to do whatever you are most comfortable with in terms of masking for you and for your family. We'll have hand sanitizers available at all start locations and optional face masks we'll have at the Dana-Farber 5K start. Again, if you're feeling under the weather, you're not feeling great, please stay home, walk virtually. Uh, you know, the, the health and safety of our community is the, is the most important thing here. Accessibility remains a priority for the walk. We, um, similar to last year, we are offering wheelchairs at our 5K start from Dana-Farber. We'll have accessible bathrooms at the start lines, the finish lines, and along the course. We'll have ASL interpretation at the 5K start dur and during the finish line speaking program. And also at the finish line, we'll have a space for nursing or pumping parents. New this year, we will have a limited amount of sensory bags available at each start location and at the finish line. These bags will include items to support children and adults with sensory needs, things like fidget spinners, earplugs, along those lines. They will be available at the info tent, the volunteer and info tent at each location. We do have a limited supply. This is our first year doing it. We're trying to gauge the need for it. But if this is something that you or a team member could benefit from, please take advantage of it. And again, please contact us to inquire or to recommend additional accommodations. We can't we, we can't guarantee that we'll be able to accommodate at this point, but we always want to improve and be better for next year. So please always keep the lines of communication open. Okay, we talked about a lot of in-person logistics, but I know we have some virtual walkers on the call as well. So we absolutely want to chat about that too. So many walkers are, you know, 15%, as I mentioned earlier, are walking from their own communities. And we can't wait to see how you how you do your walk this year. I know some teams will, you know, make a really big finish line. They'll take, you know, have refueling stations. So we're so excited to see that. And so as we have in the past, we have several virtual walker resources that we hope you take advantage of. Maria is going to put the link to the virtual walker section of our website in the chat right now, but we wanted to highlight some of these resources. So the digital ribbon wall brought to you by Bristol Myers Squibb is something that we're doing again. It's something that has been a really, really well received. If you do the walk in person, you know that we have the ribbon wall at the finish line, but we wanted to recreate this asset digitally. So um, 
this is a really, really powerful part of the walk. And Maria is going to put the link in the chat as well. But you can add a photo, a blurb of while you're walking. And I you know as we're getting closer to walk day, I'll just scroll through that. And it is so inspirational. And it really reminds you why you're doing what you're doing. Our Spotify playlist this year is brought to you by DA Boston Services, and we've added new songs, and we hope you enjoy them. Whether you're walking on Heartbreak Hill or in the woods by your house, it's a fun addition and a way to stay motivated on walk day. Bibs, again, we have this section on our website, so you can download a downloadable version of your 2024 bib, and you can customize it and print it, you know, however you want to um, do that. Coloring pages, if you've got kiddos walking with you and you're trying to keep them entertained on the walk while you're logging a few miles, we've got some walk coloring pages. Feel free to print them out and hopefully that buys you a few minutes, maybe an hour of uh, distraction for the little ones. And lastly, take photos, have fun. We we love to see how walkers experience walk day. Um, so if you take photos, please email them to us. Please only email us photos that you would be comfortable with us using, uh, potentially in marketing materials or on our website, but we would love to see how you're walking your way. And if you're posting to social media, please use the hashtag Jimmy Fun Walk. Um, and a reminder, for, don't forget to include your fundraising page because when you're out on your walk, whether you do honestly, whether you're doing this in person or virtually, putting your link with any photos is always such a powerful way to fundraise. Okay. Um, one of the last things that we wanted to touch on is our 2024 fundraising incentive program. So as we have done in the past years, we are offering this program. And a reminder, this is completely optional. If you don't want to take advantage of this, there's simply no action needed on your end. Although if you do want to take advantage, interested walkers will be able to redeem one item after the close of fundraising. We'll send an email in early November with instructions to redeem. And you can see on the screen here what some of these items are. So we hope that some of them are of interest to you and you might take advantage of it. We're already thinking post-walk. So what's on our radar for after 10-6? Um, we have a few events coming up. So our fall pace setter event is on Wednesday, November 13th. We're holding this at Showcase Cinema in Dedham yet again. Space is limited. So we'll we'll be sending an e-invite um, e around mid-October. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And we hope you can save the date on your calendar and make it if you are available. And then also our young pace setter event. So our for under 18 who raised 500 or more, we are going to be holding our Young Pace Setter event on Sunday, December 8th at Dave & Buster's in Nadek. And again, invite to follow in late October for that. So that's always a fun one. Um, early morning on a, on a Sunday, we, we can get all the kiddos out and get some energy out and to thank them for everything that they do. Okay. I've been talking a lot. I know that there's been a lot of questions in the chat. Um Mia, I know that we received some questions ahead of um, in the in the RSVP form. Do you have maybe some questions handy that we can address here today? Yep. Um, the first one that came in, I registered as a virtual walker, but I think I can make it to Boston for walk day. What should I do? A good question. We get this a lot. We get people switching their registrations a lot, which is great. We want you to be able to walk however you can. Um so to switch your registration, email us at jimmyfunwalk at dfci.harvard.edu. We ask that you do this by Thursday, October 3rd, to allow us to adjust your registration to plan accordingly for numbers on walk day. Just a reminder, if you're switching from virtual to in-person, there is a higher fundraising commitment for in-person. So um, that is $330 for adults, $130 for um, under 18 for our youth. Um, and on the flip side, if you're registered to walk in-person and now you want to walk virtually, you can also email us by 10-3 and we'll adjust that registration type as well. Okay, next one, similarly with virtual workers. If I'm walking virtually, do I need to do it by 10-6? Do I need to email any sort of confirmation once I am done? Yeah, no, that's the beauty of virtual. You can do it whenever you want. You can do it this weekend. You can do it in November. It is really whatever you want it to look like. Um, there's no need to email proof of it. But as I said, we always love to see photos. So please, please send them our way. Okay, next one. Is my fundraising commitment due on walk day? No. So fundraising commitments are due 1031. So you have you know, a few weeks after the walk to re reach your fundraising minimum. And if you've not reached the commitment by that date, the credit card that you registered with will be charged the difference. What will the food options be at the lunch stop? 
Yeah. So we've got, as I mentioned, Wegmans is our food sponsor this year. So um, we're, they're going to be offering different types of sandwiches, including turkey, ham, veggie, and we'll have gluten-free options available as well. And again, we, we just always like to say, if you have diet, specific dietary needs, please plan accordingly. While we do have a, um, a gluten-free assortment, we can't guarantee by the time you get there that it will still be available. So um, please let us know if you have any questions about that. And I'm actually seeing one question come through with the Q&A. &A. If we're doing the marathon distance, what if we take longer to complete it? Um, great question, Christine. So we actually, we have um, folks along the route, those medical suite buses, we have colleagues on our logistics team who are kind of tracking where walkers are and how, you know, where is our last walker? What does the finish line look like? If, um, if you need help, they can certainly pick you up, but they're, you know, we're not anticipating the additional mileage. We're not going to be closing down the finish line earlier. Uh, we have an eye on where the last walker is. And if there's any assistance needed, we can certainly provide it, but uh, we will be waiting for you. Excited to see you in, um, at the finish line. I hope that answered your question. I'm seeing some questions in the chat. Yes, this this meeting is being recorded. We will be following up with anyone who registered. Um, so you'll get the recording and we're glad you could join. Late is better than never. Uh, another question, if people keep donating to the team link, but no one donated to the individual pages, are we charged as well? That's a great question, Elena. Um, the fundraising commitment is based on individual registration type, right? So if you have $10,000 in your team, on your team page, let's, why don't you email us and we can move that around to team members to make sure everyone's covered for the minimum. Because if you have $10,000 on your team page, but nothing on the Walker individual pages, it, your card would still be charged. So we ask that the walkers take that proactive measure to email the walk-in box or their walk staff member to, um, to, make sure that we can move that around. A question here, my family's coming to support my walk. Will they be able to use the buses? Um, no, buses are reserved for registered walkers. So you do need a, a bib to be able to get on the bus. They're not able to utilize that. Uh, we just have too many walkers. If we were able, we, we can't accommodate um, spectators as well, unfortunately. Michelle, I'm seeing your question in the Q&A. If someone actually donated but didn't attribute it to me, can you switch the allocation? Yes. Just email us, jimmyfunwalk at dfci.harvard.edu, and we can look into this. We can track it down, and we can get it added to your page. Meg, can a friend walk with us, or do they need to be registered? Anyone who is participating on the course needs to be registered. I'm trying to see everything in here. I know we're coming up on time, so I don't want to keep us um, too, too long, but um, it looks like most of the questions have been answered. And what we'll do is we'll pull a list of um, any other questions that came in through the Q&A that maybe we weren't able to get to, and we can reach out and, and respond to you with any additional questions Yes, Michelle is asking maybe if one of my colleagues can type out the Jimmy Fun Walk general inbox into the chat. I'm sure that would be helpful for a lot of folks on this call. So Michelle will put that in the um we'll put that in the chat shortly. But keeping an eye on time, we're at 9 30. Um I think that wraps about today's town hall. I know this was a lot of information. So you'll be getting the email recording later this afternoon. If you have any questions, I encourage you to reference our event handbook. That really does have so many resources that you can utilize. Answer questions about logistics, parking, shuttles, anything like that. We're always here to help in the meantime. I know this is such a busy time of year, and we're so thankful for you all going above and beyond for your fundraising, for your advocacy. It, it certainly takes a village, and we have some of that village on this call here today. So please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. And if you have them, we will be sure to address them. And otherwise, we will see you all on October 6th and good luck in this final push. We can't wait to see you. Hopefully we get a, a sunny day as opposed to this dreary day we're having in Boston today. Let's order up a day in like the mid 60s. That would be perfect. All right, everyone. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.